punch me in my fat face for Jesus. That was one of my favorite <laughs> threats. Uh, but when I, when I look back at, at the discussion, uh, there were things that I loved about it in, in the sense that we were, you know, it's frustrating to me that I can sometimes have conversations with people I disagree with yeah. much more easily than I can with, for example, some of my friends on the left who've decided that because I'm not willing to punch people uh, for, for saying things that are awful, that I'm a Nazi sympathizer and, and will go out of their way to say this. Right. So it, it's frustrating because I, I disagree with, I don't think Jordan values skepticism. He kind of scoffed at it under his breath. And I wish I would have addressed that more. I think that's the, the biggest regret from the conversation that I have. But I was happy with that we didn't spend a whole bunch of time talking about truth, mm. except that it concerns me that with the fuzziness of, of how he talks about it, that maybe every single objection I had can be dismissed by saying, well, he didn't mean that true in reality. When he says, you can't quit smoking without a mystical experience, that atheists would actually be murderers. Um, yeah, the reference to crime and punishment. Yes. I that was very interesting, you know, yeah. In, in, and it, I'm still not convinced of what he believes about the reality that we, as right. far as I can tell, share. But the, to say that Soviet Russia was a secular humanist... I could see that was a bit that really got on your tits. It did. <laughs> yeah, because you can say it's atheist, and I'll agree all day long. And it was all, you, you could also say that it was, you know, you, you could try to make an argument that it was because of atheism, yeah. but you can't really get anywhere from atheism to therefore we should kill people and have this particular side. You might as well start with his mustache and say, you know, you know mustachioed dictators are awful. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was fascinating. And I, it was really interesting, the, the points at which you really were clearly at, at, at loggerheads. One was that, that, that issue. The, the, a thought occurred to me, though, that, that, that Jordan clearly has a, a, a pretty bleak, you might say, realistic view of human nature and what it does when it's unleashed. And I share some of that. Uh, um, but it, it, it's possible that that was one of the things that was playing out underneath that claim of his, which is... Um, you see, sometimes see this, by the way, among very conservative people, that, that, that they come to quite rigid uh, feelings about things because they actually themselves intuit where they might go unleashed. And that seemed to me to be sort of abundantly there in, in what he was saying. And I, I, find by, I find his attitude towards religion fascinating. He, he reminds me of, a, of the philosopher Roger Scruton a bit because the Scruton... I think if he's written a lot about religion, but I think that if, if you really dug down and you said to him, for instance, you know, do you believe in the physical resurrection? He wouldn't, he would want to not answer that question. And that's what and I George think does. that's where Jordan is as well. And I, I don't, I'm not, in, I'm not um, putting any, any views onto him that I think are dishonest, but I think that he has a, a real fear of saying something which he thinks would cause damage in a way if he did it. Well, that's, that's, one, that's the one question that I asked him that I had prepared ahead of time based on what I knew, and that was, what is it that you fear we will lose if right. people give up a belief in a God? And he started with, well, we'll lose the, the narrative, the metaphorical substrate mm -hmm. of the narrative, blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't tell me anything, because it doesn't tell me what of the narrative is of value that we're losing. Right. And then when I pressed on that, he just said art, as if there's not... Ton well, the problem is, is that I could say there's tons of art from, from atheists, except that he also doesn't seem to think there are any atheists. Right. He thinks everyone is religious and that people are just professing atheism, but they've made... None of this meshes with... Certainly, certainly it's, it reminds me when I'm in debates with Christian apologists and they say... Um, oh, you're not really an atheist, you, you, you actually are just uh, publicly denying that you, exist. you, you believe in a God, uh, or you, you actually know that a God exists. And that comes from, I mean, I did a debate with Sai Ten Bruggenkate, who's a presuppositionalist, and that's his big thing. You know, we, we all know that God exists, including you, you're just you know, lying or whatever. And he's mocked for it. And yet in reality, Jordan did exactly the same thing, essentially saying, you are all a, you are all you atheists are 
uh, professing atheists that, you know, a real atheist would be a cold-blooded mm -hmm. killer who would, you know, rationalize mm -hmm. and justify this way. You can't have a moral foundation that is secular. Uh, and he tried to use AI. Anyway, I don't want to go through the yeah. whole e evening. But it was essentially the same thing I get from unschooled, uneducated apologists yeah. on behalf of a much more strict view of religion. 